We're building bigger and bigger cities, but are we considering the societies we want to create and how property and infrastructure can support this aim? In the wake of COVID, much has changed already, but how must planners and developers adapt to meet the changing needs of the consumer? We have seen a shift uh, in the weighting of what's important for our occupants. Uh, and a lot of that is around a sense of belonging, of community, of feeling safe, feeling secure, uh, feeling like things are accessible to them, uh, a really um, strong drive around optionality. What do they want to be involved in and what do they not? As a developer, go into an area and just say, well, I think this is what needs to be built here. Um, you have to look at the wider um, the wider context. The big part of that wider context is the people, the residents, community groups, wider stakeholders. Not only does it build a bit of collaboration, but it, it gives a sense of ownership as well. Um, and it, it helps developers you know, to understand what, what a community actually wants or needs. A good development is, is, about, the, is about the people and it's about creating spaces which, uh, which people will, will love as their own. Um, you can't achieve that without engaging with the people who are going to live in it. With the role of the community now even more prominent in our everyday lives, as people search for more than just a home, it's clear that wider considerations must be taken by planners and developers in the future. But how do you address a shift in consumer priorities? The longer term um, success of any development is always going to be built um, around, the, uh, around the idea that there will be a community, that, they, that it, will, it will generate uh, um, a community spirit and it will end up being somewhere where people actually really want to live and can get a lot out of. The way in which developers are approaching this now is very much to work backwards. They work out what people want what people are really going to get out of the space, what is going to attract people um, to the space and what are the main sort of ingredients for a long lasting development. As a city, as developers, you can't just build homes, homes in particular because of the, that personal uh, feeling. Um, you can't do that without considering the, the wider community or neighbourhood impact of those developments. Um, and design is, is such a huge part of that. The pandemic has highlighted the impact and role of green spaces within the community environment, with research showing that the value of parks and green spaces was widely recognised for the physical, health and mental well-being benefits they contribute. With this recognition, it's clear that planners need to shape their designs to respond to shifting consumer and market demands. Given a commitment to carbon neutrality by 2041, and there are three big contributors to this, transport, industry and housing. So the housing sector has an absolutely critical role to play in this challenge. One of the things we've learned over the last 18 months is green spaces are really, really important to people's physical health and indeed mental health. So into how that green space is provided in the future is really, really critical. Now we've got some lovely early thinking on this. So uh, we talked about having pocket parks in some of our big developments and perhaps the best example of that would be in Coventry at Abbots Lane. We've talked about bringing, uh, protecting green space in the urban areas and bringing new green space back. So, but perhaps more generally, We've talked in our design charter about how each development can have the right balance of sustainability and green within it. So really important in all work coming forward that we manage to achieve that. Achieving this balance is critical and collaboration between planners, developers, councils and wider stakeholders is key to the successful delivery of initiatives such as these. Whilst it's expected that the importance of community and the focus on green spaces are trends that are here to stay, what other trends can we look forward to in the near future? I think we have seen a trend towards the built to rent being a much more, much bigger part of the, um, the overall residential uh, and just wider property, uh, property sector. It provides a, um, a new and a more, um, a more easily packaged investment opportunity so from a market perspective, but it also provides a much better asset for the, con for the consumer. Uh, and I think that that will lead to um, more and more developments in that, in that area, both from the top down and from the, and from the occupier perspective. ESG is, a, is a, obviously a hot topic and it comes up more and more in conversation. We are responsible, all of us individually and collectively, for a sustainable pl planet. And we're seeing that right from the investor side, right through to the consumer. 
that the consumer has a much higher awareness of their impact. And I see that that as a, as a huge driver um, in terms of the, the trend of the sector, but also in terms of our behaviours and, and our decision making metrics and where we place the importance of that. I do think one of the, the main things that needs to happen moving forward for businesses, for developers, planners, and of everybody that ha sort of has a, a touch point with the built environment, it, it's so much of it's going to be about flexibility and variety. Without that, we're not going to get the vitality back into our streets and our cities. This whole piece about sociability and cities being the place where people come to meet, it's been so for 250 years. I actually think that will come back really strongly. And you sense that in the community at the moment that people want to get back. We will see this trend towards the requirement for green spaces in our cities, in our living accommodation. And I think we're going to see much more imaginative developments come forward in that way.